Joe here. Let's check out some of the new mixer features in Studio One version 6. Up first, fader flip. If you've ever used a digital console, the idea of fader flip might be familiar to you. Here's a mix, and here are some channels here, and I've got these. They all have sends on them going to my plate reverb. And to adjust the level of the send, we adjust this horizontal slider here. By the way, if you double click on that, here's a brand new feature. It opens up a bigger version of that so you can adjust it even more finely. We've also added that to the panners as well on the channels. Open up the pan, double click on the panner and it'll open up this big honking thing. If I wanted to adjust these with a fader, so for example, let's say I have a lot of tracks sending to that plate reverb or perhaps I have a lot of tracks sending to a headphone mix and I'd like to just have faders available to adjust that instead of the left to right slider. We can do that now. You may notice over here on the left hand side we have a new button called Activate Fader Flip. When I click that, check out what happens. I'm going to click it a couple times. So when Fader Flip is enabled, we can see that the send is now green, letting us know this is the particular thing that has been flipped. And now we can see any tracks that don't have a plate reverb send on them have turned gray and are turned all the way down. But the ones that do have a plate reverb, the fader is now performing the same duty as that horizontal slider. So now I can adjust my plate reverb sends on the faders and when I'm done, I just click the button again. This can all be assigned to keyboard shortcuts, which makes it even more fun. So whatever I have set up in the send section, whether it's a effect send or sending to a Q mix, I can now access with fader flip. Another cool setting that I, I like, and I'm probably going to use it this way, is if you select this hide unassigned faders, check out what happens. Now when I flip the faders, I will only see the f channels that have a plate reverb send on them, so I can quickly just get to what I need to get to, and then undo, and now I'm seeing all my tracks again. Up next, pan modes. This has been a big feature request. If I double click on the panner, I showed you this already, it pops up this bigger panning window, which is super handy, but you might have noticed there's a drop down here now. I can now change how this particular panner works. And specifically when it is a stereo panner, historically this has been the only way you could do panning on the channel itself inside the console. Now we can switch to a dual panner, which means I can adjust the left pan independently of the right pan, or I can adjust, set it to binaural panning, which, if, which acts a lot more like a binaural panner or our binaural pan plugin, which means I can adjust the left to right panning as well as the width with a single control here. And I can change those depending on what I'm looking for. So on a mono channel, it stays the same because there's nothing to change there. But on a stereo channel, such as a bus, like this acoustic guitar bus, I can double click and I can change it to whichever one I need. So those, if you've got a piano, for example, and you, the left and right is a little wonky, and you want to bring the left in, but you want to leave the right where it is, with the dual pan, we can now do that. Look at that. That's super cool. I can adjust them. I can adjust the width all the way out like that. We can even type in the width here, 50%. And then within that 50%, we can move that to the left and the right, or I can move each one individually like this. So you can really dial in exactly where you want to place things in the stereo spectrum. Up next, channel overview. This one is really fun. So here's a vocal channel here. I've got three plugins and a reverb send. If I open up one of those plugins, we can see the plugin here like we've always been able to. But we have a new button here on the top left hand side of the plugin window called overview. Check out what happens when we click that. We now have kind of a blown up view of everything that's happening on this specific channel. So I can see all the channel information here. I can see the list of inserts here, the list of sends here, and even the cue mixes here. So it's a nice way to kind of see, okay, what's going on on my vocal? And we can expand this out and maybe see more things than we could in the channel itself. Um, and it's just a cool way of working. Now, the way I would use this if I was you is click the pin to keep the editor open at all times and maybe pop that in maybe the top right of your window. And so now whenever I select a different channel, I'm getting this really cool view of exactly what's happening on that channel. So if there's a whole lot of plugins, I can see all of them. If there's not a whole lot, that's fine as well, but it's a cool way of cool new workflow that you might want to experiment with. Could be very cool. Up next, track icons. You may have seen this already in the channel overview, but if we click the wrench inside of the console, we now have a new option called channel icons, which loads up these suckers right here. So we can now, by just clicking down here, we have a whole host of icons to choose from. They're organized in categories. So if I've got a guitar here, I can throw a different acoustic on that one. We've got keyboard, we've got vocals, lots of cool icons, which lets you just visually kind of see what's happening in your mix session. And guess what? You can actually do this over in the 
uh, arranger as well. We can show track icons here. And now I can add in all my favorite guitar icons and whatever I want. Super fun. Third party plugin micro views. One of my favorite features in Studio One has been for years the ability to single click on a plugin and see what's happening with that plugin visually without having to open up the full plugin window. Unfortunately, that's only worked with Studio One plugins like Pro EQ, VT1, things like that. We've now added the ability to add some parameters to this feature, even if they're third party plugins. So, for example, if I drag this limiter here, and I single click on it, this is not a Studio One or Personas plugin, I can now see different parameters here that I can adjust. So it becomes a really cool workflow piece if I use the same couple of third party plugins and I know which parameters I want to adjust, I can just come in here and make adjustments to that plugin without having to open the full thing. And that shows up here in the channel overview, it also shows up in the main view as well, we can see those same parameters there. Obviously this combined with the new channel overview feature is super handy because I've got more kind of screen real estate to deal with this. So I could have all my favorite parameters lined up here and I can make all my adjustments without having to ever change windows, which imagine how that could speed up your workflow. Now, plugins have lots of different parameters available to them. There may be some that you wanna see, some that you never wanna see. We give you that option as well. If you right click and choose set up micro edit parameters, we can now say here are all the parameters available. Holy smokes, here are the ones that are gonna show up. And then we can just add and remove whichever ones we want. So maybe I don't want to adjust the style, but I do wanna adjust the noise shaping feature. I can add that here, we can put them in whatever order we want, and then that's what will show up here. So really, I mean, think of your favorite plugins. You can customize this to your heart's content, and this will show you the top five parameters that you choose. Track presets. I've got a blank session here because I want to show this to you. If I click the Add Tracks button, you'll see this window. It looks familiar, but there's a new button down here called Load Track Preset. Check this out. Let's say I want to load the drum kit track preset. I say OK, and look what happens. Studio One didn't just add a single channel. It added a bunch of channels and a folder, and a bus and an effects send. Check it out, I've got my bus here for my drum kit. I've got all these channels for my individual pieces of the kit, and then some of these have reverb sends on them already going to this drum room plugin, and I did all of that with one click. So if you have certain combinations of tracks that you use with certain plugins, certain arrangement, even a certain folder and routing, you can save all of that as a track preset and bring that into a session. No longer do you have to go find a session that you've done before and then import that song data, you can actually save all of that as a set track preset and then bring that in. This is a great way of maybe you don't want to do a full template, but you do have like things that you do on a regular basis. Someone sends you a song and you want to add in your own collection of tracks that you always use. This is a great way to bring those in instantly. There's more stuff under the hood, but that gives you a good overview of some of the new stuff we've added to the mixer in version six.